right, now in this video, we're going to talk about using that double exposure effect as a design technique. Um, it's really popular right now, as you see those double exposure images, where it's merely just uh, using one image to show another in a very creative way. Um, now, in this exercise, I'm going to show you how to blend a couple of images to kind of get a cool design out of it. Um, and this one, it came out of me just shopping around on Adobe Stock, and I stumbled upon this image, or actually a couple of images, and thought, that would be a really cool design element and really turn into something pretty cool. Um, we're only going to use three images in this exercise. Now, of course, I have my working design file, which is uh, merely just 1,400 pixels by 2,000 pixels uh, set with a white background there. So that's what we're going to build the design in. And then I have three other images here. Now, I have a design element here. Uh, it's just a generic design element that I think will work pretty well. Uh, actually, it will work pretty well uh, for this, but we're going to change it a lot uh, based on based on the way it looks here. You'd almost think, well, you know, it's in color. It's, it's not the right angle and everything like that, but we can fix all that. So we'll get to that in just a moment. But I also have this uh, image of this dancer here, and then I also have this image of this black swan here. Now, the only thing I'm interested in this particular shot is the face, the seriousness, the straight-on look. I really like the way she's looking in this uh, image here. This is the main element here. So we're going to build our design, basically, around this uh, dancer here. Now, the first thing we need to do is, of course... Uh, extractor from the background. Then we're going to use uh, a really quick channel technique. I'm going to go ahead and throw this away because I've already done it once. But um, since she's on a white background, but there's hair elements and other softer elements here, uh, I'm going to use a channel uh, trick to, to go ahead and take care of this. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make a lumina uh, luminosity based selection by holding down the command key on Mac control on Windows and click directly on the RGB thumbnail image. And this loads the overall brightness of the image as a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new alpha channel down here, and then I'm just going to fill this active selection with white. Now, since white is my background uh, color right now, I'm just going to press Command-Delete, and that's going to fill that image in there. Now, I'm going to invert. Now, because I'm creating an alpha channel here, the white areas are my active areas, and the black areas are my inactive areas. So I'm going to need to invert this to create my alpha channel here. So you can see now the background is black and a lot of the subject is white, but we still got a lot of gray areas to deal with here as well. So I'm just gonna do start off by doing a quick fill. Uh, just press shift delete and when the fill uh, panel opens, just set the contents to white and then go down here and set the blending to overlay at 100%. And you can see it forces a lot of that area to white. Not all of it, but a good amount of it. Uh, we could do a second fill, but I'm afraid it's going to affect the edges here on the softer areas of the hair and the dress and everything like that. So we're going to paint, manually paint those areas out and just get a simple, soft, round uh, brush. Uh, and up here in the options bar, make sure that the blend mode for this brush is set to overlay. And then we're going to make the foreground color white. Just press D on the keyboard. And then you just paint in the image here. Now it's going to force whatever gray areas you're painting to white. Notice how it's not affecting the black area in the background. So it leaves um, sh um, straight black and white alone and only affects the areas that you paint in. Now down here, I want to get rid of the shadow. So I'm simply going to press X and bring black to the foreground. And then I can just paint that area away. And there we go. Nice, clean mask. So now let's go back to reactivate the RGB channel and then go back to our layers panel. And we're just going to simply go to the select menu and choose load selection. Uh, alpha one is what we want. New selection. Click OK. There it is. Now, I want to make sure I get a clean area around the soft edges. So I'm going to select a selection tool and then just click on refine edge and just use the refine radius brush just to take care of these really soft edges here. Right there, and we'll just go around the hair here for good measure. And don't forget that area in there. There we go. All right, so we got a nice clean. I'm just going to nudge the radius here just a little bit, take care of any other edges. And let's go ahead and view this on black, see what we've got. We have actually are looking pretty good. I could hit this area right inside the hair there. Cleans that up a little bit better. A little area down there. Okay. Very good. All right, now we go back to on layers here. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back 
to a new layer. Uh, everything looks, looks good. Let's go ahead and click OK. So now it's extracted and on a new layer. So let's go ahead and take this extracted subject and bring it over to our working document here. And kind of position her in the center there. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now let's go back and to our subject here. Now, like I said, all I really worried about or care about here is the face. So I'm just going to get a selection around that area and then just go ahead and drag this on over. And want to go ahead and clip this image inside of the shape of that dancer. Now, since she's our, that layer is already on top of the layer of the girl dancing, I'm just going to simply press Option Command G, and that's going to clip that image inside of that shape. And we'll just position the eyes right here. Now, I obviously need to scale this subject up a little bit because I want the eyes to really kind of fit the width here. And there we go. So what I'm paying attention to here are the lines from the eyes. And they're going right down the side here. I want to line that edge up with that corner. There there we go. So what I'm, what I'm paying attention to is this right here. See where the tip of that eye makeup meets the edge of the leg and kind of hints that line of the leg. It just kind of makes everything a line up. So gives it a really cool look. Now I want to rotate this subject just a little bit as well. Let's go ahead and just turn that just a little bit so her eyes are more more horizontal. There we go, something like that. Now, I'm going to put a layer mask on this layer of the subject that's clipped in here, and then we're just going to go ahead and use a radial gradient, simple um, foreground to transparent with black set as my foreground color, and we're just going to mask away the areas where we want to see the dancer herself. So I want to see her hands maybe right there, just appearing above her eyes there. That's kind of cool. That didn't happen the first time I did it, but I like it. And we'll just reveal this. We'll reveal maybe her foot down here a little bit more and just kind of lead that into the shadow of that element there. That looks really good. I like that. I think I'm going to nudge her down just a little bit so that hand is not completely covering the eye there. Might even scale her just a little bit more there. There we go. That's where you get into just doing a little bit of tweaking here and there just to get things finely tuned. I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now, looks pretty good, but now I want to add uh, another level of this just to kind of add more style to it. And I want to do it using that um, shape that I showed you a while ago. Well, that abstract design element that I showed you a while ago. Let me just fix the masking here a little bit more. Yeah, just bring that down just a little bit. Okay. So, again, we're back to the shape here. Now, um, of course, the first thing is the color. I'm not worried about the color, so I'm just going to go and press Shift-Command-U and remove the color altogether. Now, um, let's go ahead and rotate the angle. Let's bring this 90 degrees counter so it's straight up like that. And I'm going to use levels to get rid of the lighter gray areas around this shape and just kind of boost the contrast with what is there. And something like that. That way it looks pretty good. Now, I only want to bring this element that I see, all the light gray and white areas, that is what I want to bring over to my image. So knowing what we know about channels, it's really quite simple. I'm just going to command click right on the RGB channel, loads the luminosity, which is the only area we want anyway, um, as an active selection, create a new layer, and then go ahead and fill the selection with black. Now when I turn off the background layer, now we have that element nicely extracted. So let's go ahead and bring that on over and scale it down a little bit here. And I'm also going to flip it um, horizontally. Now, while I still have it in free transform here, I'm just going to go ahead and choose from the pop-up menu here, flip horizontal. And let's go ahead and scale this up again. Maybe something like that. I'm going to adjust it in a minute. but um, And now I want to position this underneath the dancer, as you can see right there. But now I want to also mask the dancer inside of this shape. So what I'm going to do is make a duplicate of 
that layer and let's position that layer above that uh, shape we've got here. And let's go ahead and get rid of that layer mask because we're going to do some different masking on that. So we've got the duplicate layer above that shape layer. And again, like before, I'm going to do Option Command G and that's going to clip that shape or that uh, subject inside of that shape. Now I can move this shape around. You can see it's going to reveal in certain parts. So I just want to kind of put this Kind of in the area like that. Now, I notice that some of the angles are not quite where I want them to be. Like this line here, I really like it to conform to her neck or to her cheek line a little bit more. So I'm just going to put it in free transform and let's just go and choose warp from the menu here. And because it's an abstract shape, I'm going to push this shape inside and then push this one out. And that's going to help define that line along her cheek. Something like that. I'm going to nudge that back over, but there, yeah, so there's a the difference there. So. so let's just nudge that back this way a little bit. And then we'll bring all these other layers back this way just a little bit more as well. There we go. And position it right there. Now, while I have that layer selected, I'm just going to go ahead and add another little gradient right here. Let's make it a little bit lighter. I'm just going to bring the opacity of the gradient tool down a little bit. And reveal a little bit of the edge there. Maybe something there. Not too bad. Not too much, though. You don't want to get revealing too much. You still want to be able to distinguish um, those shapes. Um, you can even just go ahead and drop the... Well, let's not do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll just go ahead and drop the opacity of the object layer. There we go. That, that's much better. Now, I'm going to put an adjustment layer above the shape layer. But you know, with the dance, let's just actually turn these two layers off. So I'm going to put an adjustment layer, hue saturation, right above the, the background layers. I'm going to turn on colorize, and we're going to give it this kind of red cast on it. If you notice that, you didn't see it. Um, colorize. Um, got the hue really at zero, and then I've got the saturation at around 25, and that just gives me this kind of um, cast on it. I'm going to turn these other two layers on. Now you can see that separation a little bit more. And that pretty much does it. So apart from just doing a few little tweaks here, uh, you can see how you can take a really interesting shape like this dancer and then combine it into this really kind of cool black swan theme by utilizing some interesting double exposure techniques just by blending a few layers and using those clipping groups. And don't forget about abstract shapes. Being able to manipulate them if you need it to turn it just a little bit. Remember that warp tool can come in really handy for those kinds of effects and uh, doing some really interesting design work.